If you like this video, please rate, comment, share and subscribe. And if you dislike it, please tell me why so I can improve. Here is roughly the chromosomes of the human genome. Genetic material in humans is organized into 23 pairs of chromosomes, which used to be given letters. And when they got to X and Y, because there were 23 pairs, they decided to label those X and Y, but they've now changed the way they label them and now they number them instead. Usually chromosomes occur in people in pairs. One set of chromosomes is inherited from the mother and one set from the father. And usually there are 46 of them all together, 23 pairs. So for example, this one here, there's a pair. This one here, there's a pair. As far as the sex chromosomes are concerned, however, the inheritance is different. The X cell always provides an X chromosome, and the Y, the, but the sperm can provide either an X or a Y. So, male humans normally have a pair of X chromosomes, or they have They have an X and a Y chromosome, which is not upside down. You can actually get a picture of your chromosomes like this by somebody taking a, an electro, a microscope photograph of dyed cells in division and then basically cutting all the photo out and sticking it on a board or something like this. I mean, obviously, in a more computerized way nowadays, I imagine. And then that's what you get. And you can see abnormalities. Now... Under normal circumstances, as I said, a male has an X and a Y like that. However, the female then has an X and an X. Now what you notice about this Y chromosome here, keep an eye on that Y chromosome. That Y chromosome is very small. It's the smallest chromosome as far as I know. Every, every other chromosome you can see there is bigger than that. So the Y chromosome doesn't dis doesn't contribute very much to the genome and in fact the only thing it has on it apart from the spry genes SPRY which determines masculinity is a gene for hairy ears there are a few others but basically it doesn't do very much which is just as well because otherwise women wouldn't have it and then there'd be a problem and of course women are XX on the whole however sometimes they don't divide normally so you don't get the meiosis that happens doesn't divide up properly and what happens then is you can get some unusual arrangements one of them is monosomy mono single somy body where you have only one x chromosome as far as the sex chromosomes are concerned it's a bit difficult to work out how this happens because x chromosomes are needed in the cell one is always inactivated and forms a bar body and so then you get that. That's known as Turner's syndrome. Turner's syndrome, people are of short stature. They look female because the basic body type of the human being is female. They have a webbed neck and they may have learning difficulties. So I've heard they also tend to have coarctation of the, aor the aorta. So that's XO, although the O doesn't refer to a chromosome. It refers to the absence of a chromosome. So it's like X0. So that's Turner's, syn Turner's syndrome. Now, when you get XX, people with Turner's syndrome, because they don't only have one X chromosome, or one X chromosome is always inactivated, because they only have one X chromosome, you can spot them because they will be phenotypically female, they will appear to be female, but they will have no bar bodies in their body cells because their X chromosomes are all they need. Then you have, obviously, the normal female like that. Then beyond that, you get XXY. Now, XXY, I would generally regard as male, although I think there are some XXY regard as female. Now a certain person is probably going to turn up and tell me a lot more about this from personal experience and I am acutely aware that I'm not doing this from personal experience and I don't want these people to be regarded as interesting specimens or whatever or as museum pieces because that's quite insulting and also I'm not going to provide any photographs of them for the same reason because people need to be respected because they are people. Now people with this, this is known as Kleinfelter syndrome but obviously it can be treated it needn't be manifested in that form. They're normally male looking. They have small, sometimes have small breasts. They have less muscle. They tend to be tall. They tend to be infertile. So come on, Graham, come along and tell me why I'm wrong about that. 
because I'm perfectly aware that I may need to be corrected in that respect. There are some other variations as well, which I can't show you here because I've got enough stickers. One is XXX, which is trisomy X, which is meta-female. These people are, are tall and they tend to be infertile and they are obviously phenotypically, they appear to be female and they are female. And these are often not at all detected in the population. They may be detected occasionally if they end up having a carrier type that is this thing when they have their chromosomes looked at in that way. Um, if they have a carrier type done, then yes, they may be detected. And the other one is XYY. Now, I can't show you that either because, again, I've only got one set of stickers. But XYY, you'd have another Y chromosome there. Now, those people are also often undetected in the population, and they are phenotypically male because they only have one X chromosome and they have two Y chromosomes. Now, they're said to be normal, but there is some controversy about that, and I think they also tend to be tall. People with XXY also tend to be tall. However, looking at the whole thing, and let's go and restore a appearance of Kleinfelters there. Looking at the whole thing, um, whereas it is partly to do with the sex chromosomes, it's actually to do more with gene expression because there is such a thing as an XX male, which is where the spry gene gets spliced onto one of the X chromosomes from the Y chromosome. So you get an XX male who appears to be male and is male, but happens to have the spry gene on the other side and therefore will appear will actually be basically female because they've got Y chromosome but they do have the gene that it confers maleness because maleness is actually conferred by a gene and not a chromosome although on the whole they will have the other thing is that people with XXY have different sized bar bodies which determine whether they will appear to be more female or more male the bigger the bar body the more likely they are to identify as female and appear to be female. And come along, Graham, for, com, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And um, this suggests that the chromosome, the, the genes expressed that are present on the bar body are sometimes expressed because if you had a bigger bar body and it was expressed, that suggests that something is in fact happening and it is not as deactivated as everyone might think. So that's it for today. Um, if anyone has Turner's, is an XYY, is a metafemale, please do comment and please do take this in the respect in which it's meant. I'm just trying to tell people because somewhere out there, there will be people with children, for example, who may have problems, who need to have them looked at. And it just may ring a bell with some people. And I just thought I'd put that out there. And yeah, just to do that. So I'll see you tomorrow.